take a look. Forgot how to do this already. It is Monday. It is April 1st. I'm here alone again because apparently no one wants to do this show with me. It's WrestleMania week. And you would think, oh, let's have a bunch of people come on to talk about wrestling for WrestleMania week. And nope, just no one wants to do the show. Joel messaged me last night. He can't do the show. Here's, you know, I, I try to message, I try to message. I actually didn't want to message SP3 because like I was kind of mean to him on Friday and he showed up late. So I'm like, uh, let me not do that. So uh I didn't I, I felt bad messaging SP3. I should probably message John Alba again to see if he can do it. What's Andrew Zarian doing? He used to be on our show all the time. Sean's not around anymore like sean doesn't show up as much as he used to i guess he's traveling this week Corey, you should be working everybody should be working it's wrestlemania week what are we talking about like everybody should be working on wrestlemania week it's the busiest week of the year there is no i'm not working on wrestlemania week <sighs> so here we are wrestlemania week alone on in the weeds we're on the main channel that's always fun main channel monday here we go leave a thumbs up on the video let's see if the thumbs up let's see if we can get the fireworks going for come on uh, uh. doesn't work it's not working for me no this isn't we, we can't there we go point to the sign the last week of sign pointing season leave a thumbs up on the video leave leave a super chat if you would like to do that as well get your question comment statement right on the air subscribe to the channel subscribe to fightfuloverbooked.com that's where we are monday wednesday friday 10 a.m to noon eastern please subscribe to fight Flow overbooked we are on the main channel though we are on the main channel every monday the first monday of the month and it happens to be the first monday of the month it happens to be april fools it happens to be main channel Monday. I'm going to I'm going to have to message SB3. And I feel really bad for messaging SB3 because I said mean things about him on on Friday. He didn't show up on time. He's like an hour late, 45 minutes late. SB3 is usually pretty pretty on time. It's sometimes a little late. Sometimes, you know, sometimes he messaged me like five minutes before. Like, hey, running a little behind. But, you know, I I get it. I got kids as well. I got 12 of them. He's got 15 of them. So I get it. Like there's a lot happening with the kids going on. So I get I get being late sometimes. But he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't punctual on Friday. So I was a little down, but I'm gonna message him. Hold on. Hey. Hey, sorry about Friday. Uh, no one can do the show today. You free? We'll see what he says. Hopefully. Hopefully he shows up. We will see. We will see. Whoa! That was like the quickest I've ever seen SP3 reply to a message. The quickest I've ever seen anybody. Reply to a message. Joel is a coward. Joel is a coward. Didn't show up for work. Joel's actually doing okay. Joel, Joel, uh, he had some, some family stuff. So he he messaged me late last night, said he wouldn't be able to do the show today. Um, you know, best wishes to Joel and, and the family of Pearl. Hi, buddy. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here, folks. <laughs> And all I can say is, April Fool's! 
April Fools. I've been in the backstage area this whole time. SV3 has been here the whole time. An elaborate ruse. Elaborate ruse. It was awesome everyone. seeing everyone fall for it in the in yes. the chat. It was great. It was great. Yeah. And everyone and I just lo I love Algerby had a five minute time limit and he, he was he was almost running out of gas. And he was like he's he was in a submission, but he stood on, he was like this. He stood on, he made it to the five minutes. Great job. <laughs> Uh, I appreciate you joining SP3. Joel did message me late last night. He said he wasn't going to be able to do it. And I immediately did a message SP3. And I, I was well prepared. I sent you the link like yes. 24 hours. Well, not quite 24 hours, but like 12 hours in advance, which never happens. Um, usually it's like 30 minutes in advance. Well prepared. It's WrestleMania week. You got to be on top of your game, you know? It, it's prepare, gotta, prepared. Yeah, prepare, prepared. It, it's got it's to gotta be, you got to be 100% locked in for WrestleMania week. SB3, you know how it is. We are here. It is the final week before two nights of WrestleMania 40. There's plenty to talk about, but at the same time, I feel like we covered a lot of ground on Friday that we don't need. I even, so here you go. I even, this even tricked the wife, SB3, because she goes, I was a little confused. Didn't you message him last night? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I didn't let her in on the April Fool's joke. You know, if you're going to yes. work, you got to work everybody. You know, what you I mean? got to work like, everybody. You can't yeah. even tell the wives. You can't <laughs> tell the family. You got to fool everyone. That's right. So she didn't even know that this bit was going on here. All right. We got a lot to talk about with WrestleMania week. Uh, did you watch the Roman Reigns A&E documentary last night? I've only seen clips. All I saw was the discourse on social media about it which was hilarious because there were some people who liked it and then there was some people who was like this is the worst uh a e special that they've done i've kind of backed off of watching them after like season one like season one was kind of a mixed bag for me with their a e specials so when they came up with like a new title for them biography wwe legends i was like eh, i don't know if I'll, I'll watch those or maybe i'll uh, one day i'll watch them in bulk but what did you think did you watch it i watched it um and it was it was good they left out a lot of stuff they also like kind of uh you know they're telling the story from their side right you know what i mean like any WWE documentary, they do a lot of good documentaries, but you're going to get the WWE spin yeah. on things. And that's how this was. And they they couldn't cover all the ground they needed to cover with Roman in, in the allotted time length. Um, the, the Shield bit, though, where Roman was like, yeah, I didn't want to do that. Uh, didn't want to turn babyface, but I couldn't really say no. That was uh, that was something. That was something. Oh, they brought up the how he said acknowledge me like a decade ago and everything. Uh, him talking about losing his brother was really good as well. So it was good. I encourage everybody to watch it. But it, it people are are very funny. Everybody's looking for clues of oh, does this mean Roman's gonna win at WrestleMania? Like, why would they do this if Roman wasn't going to win at WrestleMania? Everyone's looking for the clues on this. I think yeah. Roman's going to win at WrestleMania. <laughs> I, I did see the line where he said that if he's not the number one guy, he doesn't need to be here. He doesn't want to be here. Yeah, it didn't show up enough uh, anyway. So, like, eh. you know, it was like, it's like, well, what are we really talking about here? <laughs> um, but, yeah, I expected the WWE spin to it. That's why I wasn't kind of like really going out of my way to watch it because i was like they can't really tell the real roman Reigns story of why the fans rejected him and what happened after the shield and uh, i i mean i you know i would love to you know see the stuff because i saw the clip with him with his brother talking about you know how much you know potential he had and how much he was going to raise the family and elevate everything and i saw how emotional he was getting and i thought that was really nice anytime roman talks about his family that's the real roman talking so i like that he's so good like just so good as a as a personality um yeah. and, and like some of it was very clearly real especially when he's talking about his family and stuff the other so other parts of it is like you can tell just like that tribal chief is coming out of yeah. him he's, he's he's very charismatic very captivating 
possibly the final week of Roman's reign. SB3, possibly, possibly. We got a we got Raw tonight. Rock and Roman are supposed to show up. Cody and Seth, I assume, will be there. What do they need to do in your mind on Raw tonight? As they still have SmackDown, but coming off of last week, where you had the big angle where Rock bloodied up Cody, we learned Roman was the one who gave the orders on that. What do you think they need to do tonight with Rock and Roman in the building? I think you can have you could do the the whole setup of the whole angle with Rock and Roman coming out saying their piece because everybody wants to hear the rock talk, especially after last week where he came out, did the big entrance and didn't say anything except for whispering to Cody. So you got to give rock time to speak, but I think Cody and Seth interrupt and we kind of, I think that's going to be, it's going to be the final segment of the show and you end the show with all four guys brawling. I don't know if it's going to be the final segment. They had the first hour commercial free. That is true. They might give them that opening segment, let them go. Let them go for the whole hour. As long as they need to go. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It might be one of those things where WWE likes to do, where they do the opening segment, like the big opening segment, and then they replay it throughout the next two hours. That's what they might do. Yeah, you kind of kick off the show with uh, Rock and Roman saying their whole piece. I really feel like Roman Reigns kind of needs a good promo to kind of direct things to the issue about him and Cody Rhodes. And then you have Cody and Seth come out and they just need to fight. They can't they can't go back and forth with these guys because back and forth with The Rock, you're never going to win, really. Uh, So I think that the best thing for Cody and Seth is to come out get physical they can have a big pull apart brawl and then they can replay the whole angle throughout the night and then we can and then we can hear from cody and seth later in the night i think seth definitely needs to do something to get a little juice on his, his portion of this match i do think roman needs a little something as well like i know they tried to oh roman put the hit on, on Cody Roman was the one who did that so that makes him look a little bit better after the rocks attack but rock's been carrying this thing with uh just being there with his promos last week with the attack on Cody and coat like the program feels like it's Cody and rock right yeah now. Roman feels a little off to the side Seth feels like he's in a different arena I right. I will I wouldn't mind them doing a promo segment with Roman and Seth cuz that that that's a that's a big kind of narrative thread in the whole story of why Seth is involved in this whole thing their their long history with each other but it hasn't been like made into the forefront other than you know the couple of passing lines that they had in the face to face with Cody and Roman on SmackDown uh 2 weeks ago so they need to kind of direct that if you're going to make that a part of the story and you know it's going to be a part of the video package with them uh in their shield gear and you know the clips of that that you gotta kind of have to have a promo between the two guys to kind of talk about their issue why this is a big deal for them because this is their first time uh being advertised for the main event of wrestlemania seth can bring up the last time he inserted himself into the main event of wrestlemania that roman was in and what happened and it was a career defining moment kind of what they were doing on social media they can do it on tv I think that it would help out the feud overall and make it more about the tag team feud instead of about Cody and rock. The longest history between all of these men. I mean, I guess rock Roman family. Yeah. But then it's Roman and Seth. Yeah. Like on screen, it's Roman and Seth. Like that's way above even, even rock Roman like that on screen. They're really, I guess you can go back to 2015 when rock helped Roman and everything if i'm seth i'm bringing that up too of i would bring up hey remember last time you two were in philly together how how that worked out for you i guess roman won but crowd didn't crowd didn't really care about that you know just bring up that like you needed rock last time you were in philadelphia and a lot like last time crowd didn't want to see that either just like crowd didn't want to see you two together again facing each other this time going into Philadelphia. There's a lot of history to bring up between yeah. Seth and Roman. And I do hope they really get to touch on that. Like I would, 
I don't know if I'd have Roman open the show. I, I would have Roman open the show. What, I, what I'm trying to say is, I don't know if Roman singular opens the show, talks, Seth interrupt, Rock interrupt, Cody interrupt. Like, I don't know if you need the revolving door of interruptions like that, especially when you're trying to present everybody as a unit, uh, specifically yeah. Roman and Rock, even though they have separate entrances. Uh, so I don't know if, if we need to do that, but I do think you got to put a lot more juice on Roman and Seth. And there's certainly a way to get there. Maybe you do do the, the big pull apart brawl because you'll have Roman, Seth, Rock, Cody, Usos can go out there, Solo, Drew can come out. You know, it's it's against the baby faces, but that's fine. The baby faces should be outnumbered in yeah. this. Um, I don't know, Bloodline stands tall, and then we get some side eyeing between Roman and Drew and things like that. Because Drew obviously they're helping they're helping Drew right now, and Drew's accepting it because he'll take care of them in due time. But I don't know if they're gonna, you know, it's obviously not a full alignment or anything yeah. like that. So there's ways to do it. I would definitely open the show with them though. And I would let Roman and Seth do a good chunk of the talking, but obviously rock and Cody got to say something. Like, uh, yeah. Cody should swing first. Honestly, Cody, yeah, yeah. Cody, Cody doesn't need to say anything. Yeah. He just needs to swing on, on rock after last week. That's what I said. I said, Cody just needs to come out and brawl. He needs to come out looking for a fight after last week. He can't go back and forth with the rock on the mic. Nah, we need to fight after last week. You, yeah, he you shouldn't. Did, you bloodied me. You disrespected my mama. You like you got a belt with my mama's name on it. Like, come on, man. Yeah, there should be no words from Cody. Like, he should just start swinging. Just on site. No, yeah, maybe act like you're gonna talk and then throw a punch. That's it. Like. We don't we don't need Cody out here talking, recapping what happened to him last week and how he's gonna get his revenge and stuff. Nah. You got your ass beat, dude. Like you gotta you gotta throw hands next time you see that man. You can't be trying to you can't be trying to, to go out here and do the your typical Cody Rhodes monologue no. and all this stuff. That would be a mistake. Don't don't do that, Cody. Please don't. Please don't. Yeah, Look, well, man, I don't, I don't Brandy, need everybody to point to the sign at the same time again. If Brandy comes out, that's all I need. All I need is Brandy Rhodes coming out. Who told you it was open mic night? Who the hell told you tonight was open mic night, bitch? The best. The absolute best. We need Brandy to come out and just start eviscerating. She would destroy the rock. I don't know. I don't know. Rock, you, you know Rock. Rock could be disrespectful to women. Nah, Brandy would destroy that man. Because the thing, the, the problem is, Rock, yeah, typically would be disrespectful. You know, 2000s, 99, Attitude Era stuff, he can get he away can get with get that. Away with that. Yeah, he can't get away with that he anymore. He can't get away with it as much now. And because he can't get away with it as much, that's going to be a knock against them. And Brandy can't, she can get away with anything. Like, you know, Brandy's calling herself these names, you know, like she's called herself a bitch. So you can't, you can't call her that word and act like that's going to matter to her. Nah, Brandy, Brandy would end that man's career. He'd have to go back to Hollywood after doing all this. And then Brandy will be part of uh, Cody's act moving forward. We'll Brandy see. should win the title. She should be as I, I I like the Cody and Brandy act. I like uh, I like Brandy in its corner. I like them together. Brandy should Brandy should win the title. No, Cody should be it. They're a mo they could be a modern corner. day macho and Miss Elizabeth. Cody should be in her corner. She should be the champion. <laughs> Cody can whatever. I don't no, know. I, 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 I'm I'm you know I'm I'm good. I'm good. I, I don't. I I want to see Brandy do the talking for Cody. That's what I I want. That's why I want her to be the manager for Cody. Randy should just be the wrestler, be the champion, carry the belt everywhere. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I, li I like my idea better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for Cody be uh, being managed by Brandy if Brandy does all the talking. That way Cody's not out here 
for 20 minutes crying exactly monologuing <laughs> talking about you know his, his but, stump but the, speech the potential of uh brandy rose matches that's why i'm like okay i prefer my idea better for her, her just talking brandy matches should just be she kicks the person in the dick and beats him <laughs> that's it that's it it's like it's like she has the offense of uh stephanie mcmahon in wrestlemania yeah. 2000 Dude, Stephanie ruled in those games. You get the wind up slap. That's that Ronda Rousey concussion slap right there. That is right there. <laughs> That's serious, yo. The way Ronda was talking about it, man, she had PTSD and describing it. Dude, th those slaps in those games were brutals. Yeah, the slap. China would rule in those games with the the big wind up to the low blow. Yeah, he was great in those games. She used to do, and she used to do all power moves too. It was great. Yeah, yeah. So that's all. That's all. Brandy's uh, offense needs to be the big wind up slap, the big wind up low blow, and a good old dick kick. That's it. Dick kick. There Brandy we go. and Brandy can hold the title for. She should surpass Bruno. WWE 2K24. We're gonna have somebody who has, who makes universe mode with uh, Brandy as the champion for two thousand three hundred days. That would be me. I would do that. <laughs> There's got to be a good Brandy creator wrestler in the community. There probably is already. It's yeah. been out for what a month now. So yeah, yeah, it's been it's been out there for for a while. Um, I'm sure I'm sure there is a good Brandy, uh, good Brandy creator wrestler out there. Anything else from Raw? Raw. Uh, Raw is all about rock and Roman, to be yeah. honest with you. I mean, we got Sammy and Bronson Reed in a rematch where I'm just like, so we had Bronson beat him last week, so Sammy could get his win back this week, I guess? I guess so. I thought Bronson was trolling at first. I was like, oh, Bronson's just going to work himself into this Intercontinental title match. <laughs> you thought he, he, he won <laughs> and it wasn't the plan? No, I thought like he, he posted the graphic yesterday. And he's like gonna go two and zero against Sammy against the number one contender because you know it's the same graphic. Yeah, it's the it's the yeah. same graphic from last week. So I just I thought had he to, used I, the same graphic. I had to check WWE uh, Twitter Twitter page to make sure what else. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> once they retweeted it and confirmed it, I was like, oh, okay, yeah. all right. You know, Bronson was out here pushing for the meaty men invitational and stuff. He's like, just trying to figure out some way to get on this mania car, even well, though they already advertised the him for the Andre. Man, I was looking at that Andre, and it's like, man, ricochet, man. I thought I thought they were gonna do something with you. They were giving you a mini push for head of head of mania, but I guess that was just three weeks and it's over. Or maybe they'll pick it back up after mania. Who knows? But Andrade, man. Andrade done left AEW I saw, to get in the Dre. I saw a lot of people, I don't call it any names, but I saw a lot of people mad. At, like, this should be on the WrestleMania pre show. I disagree. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm good. I think they should have matches on the WrestleMania pre show because it's two hours. Why is it two hours? I do not want to see these boring people talk about professional wrestling for two hours even if it's big e and cm punk who i very much enjoyed on the wrestlemania kickoff panel but that was like an hour before the actual kickoff started i don't know if i could deal with two hours and i ha also have to deal with like the other talking heads you know Ke kayla braxton is great uh kathy kelly is great it's all the other people that they get besides Punk and Big E, which are great additions to the panel. I don't know if I can deal with two hours of the other people. Just don't listen to it at three three. They don't say anything. No, no, I'm not gonna I never watch that. I stopped watching. I it, <laughs> Wrestle I remember WrestleMania 38. WrestleMania 38 was the first time that they did the whole two hour pre show with no pre show matches. And I was like, never again. Never again. I don't. I have never watched a minute of any of these pre-shows ever since. They don't say anything important on these shows. No. I do want to like talk about. Oh, this should be on the pre-show. Everybody works hard all year to get their WrestleMania spot. Yeah, we should put the Battle Royals on the pre-show. Everyone should have a spot at WrestleMania. No. <laughs> what are we handing out participatory trophies for? 
No, you don't get on the pre-show battle royal. You get you the battle royals on SmackDown. I don't need this stuff on the pre-show. Now, I will say, I'll be I'll be fair to this. If they make more because they are on the WrestleMania card and they get a bump in pay because it means they were on WrestleMania. And yeah. even if it's a pre-show battle royal, yes, yeah. I want everybody on the WrestleMania card so they can get more money. I want that to be very clear. But if we are just looking at it of like deserves to be on WrestleMania, everyone deserves to be on the WrestleMania card for everything that is, you know, for all they've done all year. No, I like that you, they're not just handing out WrestleMania matches. That's what they used to do. That's why they did these pre-shows. That's why they did all those multi-man matches of like, we got to get you on WrestleMania. No, some stories and matches are more important than others. This pre-show Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, no offense to it. It doesn't mean anything. It hasn't meant anything. Could you make it mean something? Sure. But we've been doing this thing for 10 years now. Ain't really done anything with who's ever whoever won. That's insane that they've been doing it for yes, 10 years. I know. <laughs> and yeah, like I, I like I was like, oh shoot, that was can you name all 10 Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Winner World winners? Let's see if we can do this. Claudio Castanoli. Yep. Uh Big Show, Baron Corbin. Sure. Yeah. Big Show won at 31. Okay. Uh, I believe Baron you. Corbin at 32. Yeah. 33 was Mojo Rally. Because I remember that was the wasn't that the Gronk the Gronk appearance? Yeah, I think so. got, when he when he hopped over the barricade. Yeah, I think uh, so. thirty four was Matt Hardy because it was Bray Wyatt's return from the swamp. Okay, shit, I don't remember that one at all. All right, uh, thirty five was I believe that was Braun Strowman because I was the one with the SNL people, wasn't it? They had the SNL. Uh, people. yeah, that was yeah, the one yeah. in New York. Yeah, that you're was the right. one in you. Did right. thirty? Did they have one at thirty six? No. I uh, yeah, and I and thirty the thirty seven starts when they started doing it on WrestleMania SmackDown. So I think thirty seven is uh, Jay Uso. Yep. Uh, thirty eight, Mad Cat Moss wasn't. It? Yep. Uh, and thirty nine. Damn, Lash! Oh, it's uh Bobby Lashley because he came out at WrestleMania with the trophy. Look at SP three, <laughs> all of them. First black Got them all WrestleMania right. Mania <laughs> champion. Could put some respect on my name. I went on a <laughs> I went on a trivia show and they just introduced me as oh former Quizlemania champion. I told I I went off on Greg Cherry. Yes, I'm shouting you out, Greg Cherry. I went I went off on Greg Cherry and I told him I was like no first black. Quizzlemania champion. Put some respect on I, I'll be honest with everyone. I remember Mad Cop. I remember Lashley because that was a thing. Could not have told you. Could not remember Jey Uso won that thing. Matt Hardy baffled me. When you said Matt Hardy... <laughs> that, I saw you. That's when you started looking up. Like, yeah, okay, that's when I, I was know like, what. <laughs> but when you, but the, uh, truthfully, when you said like that's when Bray returned, I was like, oh yeah, that that actually makes sense. I do remember this now. I was but, like, I was I there for that. I was there that. for that. I was there for that one, so that's why I remembered it. Big Show baffled me. I I would have probably just said Big Show because it was like, yeah, they've been doing this shit for ten years. He had to win that thing at some I, point. That's the one that Mizdow should have won, but Big Show won it. I remember he that. That's up. that's why I remember that one. Could not remember Braun, but that was another thing where it was like. I'd probably just say Braun and you got a, you know, a halfway decent shot at being correct yeah. on it. And I could not remember most of these, but look at SP three got all nine of them. Correct. Who's going to win this year? Um, I mean, who, the looking at the field, I would say someone like Omos would fit with the winners that we just named. If they're using it for like an undercard guy to give him a big win, like they did with like Madcap, and uh, they're not gonna uh, do anything with these people. No, they're not. They're not. That's why. That's why I usually just go with the guy who's like the biggest star. But they have like guys that are kind of all on the same level in like Ricochet, Chad Gable, uh, Andrade. I would say out of those guys, Chad Gable was the one that I think has more of a story coming out of WrestleMania. So I'll pick him. I think a lot of people are probably going to look at Chad Gable or Bronson Reed at winning it. 
Bronson Reed. Yeah, that's yeah. Good one. Bronson's probably my pick. Omos makes a lot of sense just because big. Yeah, uh, that's what I said. He fits with like the the history, like the bronze, the uh, the uh, big shows that have won it before. It, it, they don't do anything with the they winner. Don't. Maybe that changes with Triple H having you know a, more say. Last year, like he had say, but didn't have. Uh, they like the, they like blew any like potential of the Andre winner, like it leading to anything. Year one, yeah, when they when they uh changed Cesaro from Dutch Mantel to freaking Paul Heyman, that was so I was there for that WrestleMania. That was a great WrestleMania. Cesaro yeah. winning was fantastic. Top five, top five mania, WrestleMania 30. The Paul Heyman pairing on paper made sense, the timing of it was just bad because Lesnar just ended the streak. Like, if Lesnar had lost the Undertaker. That pairing makes a lot more sense because Lesnar probably screws off for however long and then comes back whenever he comes back. So like Heyman has nothing to do. You give him to Cesaro. Okay, it makes sense. But the the timing was really bad and they didn't do anything with it. And Cesaro was a complete afterthought. And that's what it was. Big Show winning any Battle Royal, just they don't go anywhere with it. It, it doesn't, none of this but needs just- anything. It, it it's because it was a very short-sighted move you know i do the show with with dutch and he's told me it was like they they figured that out the next day they what they put cesaro with Heyman. like it wasn't something that they like thought through like okay after wrestlemania you know brock's gonna win we need to put Heyman with somebody oh let's put it with cesaro no they figured that that stuff out after mania so it was a very haphazard move. And literally, they just paired Cesaro with Heyman so Heyman can come out on TV every week and remind everyone that Brock Lesnar broke The Undertaker's yeah. uh, uh, winning streak. That's all it was for. That literally was the all it was for. If you just would have paired him up with Dutch and do more of a gradual story of him, of him separating himself and going out on his own that he didn't need anybody, that would have been the better route. But they blew it year one. Then they tried to bring it back with like Corbin winning it, and then they actually had plans to use Corbin after that, but that never panned out. So I think Bronson Reed can win this thing and then defend it as this meaty man trophy. I wouldn't mind that. That's actually a cool idea. You know, he's he's pushing for that. I think he was pushing for it as like I won on Mania, which bless. Uh, you know, I don't blame him. For that but yeah. he's been pushing for that so i think like him winning it being like you know what i'm actually gonna make this try to mean something this is now going to be the andre the giant meaty man slapping meat trophy and i'm gonna defend this thing and if you're the reigning andre if you hold the trophy you get an automatic entry into next year's andre the giant memorial battle royal then you can put some steam on this thing they're not gonna do this by the way, I don't think they have any plans. Just, you, know, you just you just told us that he's gonna create the Andre the Giant Beat title. Yeah. <laughs> what if they made the thing out of meat and like you could eat it? The giant meat, the giant meat title. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is what it's this trophy, is what the people though. want. I like it. I like that yeah. it's a trophy and not a championship. Like the like the like the Heritage Cup. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you can eat the thing. Like who? Somebody like discovers our truth because it's always our truth. Yeah, of he course. discovers that this thing is like actually made of meat. He goes up to it. He's like, "Oh, you got a nice trophy, dog." And you know, he thinks it's like a chocolate. So he like takes a bite, and everyone's like, "Oh, our truth is so so silly." Ha ha. He go, Arr. and like it actually rips off. It's just jerky. The Andre the Giant jerky. Is what it is. Andre the Giant Jerky yeah. title. Yeah. The Jerky Meat title. Yeah. The and then everyone's like title. stunned. <laughs> Everyone is like stunned. Like, oh shit. What? It actually is made of meat. You can actually eat the thing. And our truth <laughs> is like, yeah, dog. It's it's the meat championship. Why wouldn't it be edible? You somehow made it by saying it's Andre the Giant jerky meat title. (laughs) I feel it's a great idea. 
Oh, oh I mean, <laughs> so much worse. Yes. <laughs> they got the partnership with Slim Jim. Yo, right be... there, exactly. They yeah. Can just, and and L.A. Knight. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna go for the title now. You know, it's made with the Slim Jim meat. So, like, that's how you work it all together yep. here. I I feel this is a fantastic idea. We just carry around this edible trophy. Sponsorships are happy. They're like, shit. They can start selling these Andre the Giant meat sticks? They go, they go with, like, edible arrangements. Like, you can yeah. get an edible arrangement of the same Andre the Giant jerky meat title. Imagine you go to like your local 7 Eleven mm-hmm. and you just see the giant Andre the Giant meat sticks. You yeah. want the regular Slim Jims? No, no, no. You want the Andre the Giant meat oh, sticks. Oh, and, and they can have like different versions of it. Like you can have Andre the Giant meat stick with, uh, you know, when Batista's Andre, got the biggest meat stick. When, when Andre had the singlet, then you can have Andre the Giant meat stick when he had just trunks in the fro. And then you could like it's you could come in like different eras of Andre the Giant. See, this is marketing genius. The the eight uh, Andre was what the the eighth wonder of the world, yeah. Yeah. The eighth... you, that, then you can have like a uh, you can have like different wrestler versions of Andre the Giant meat sticks. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Batista's got the biggest meat stick. Yeah, you can have Val Venus, but it's like half a meat stick is like hanging off. You don't want a Val Venus meat stick. No. no, the choppy choppy. Yeah, you know, yeah, the, I know, the, the but fuck that guy. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a genius idea. Why aren't we in WWE marketing? Someone, someone's like in their right. notepad, like jotting this down, and they're like, "Oh man, these guys are marketing geniuses. They just, they're just giving it away for free." Andre the Giant meat sticks, everybody. Andre the Giant Jerky Meat Sticks. Come on, Slim Jim. <laughs> no partnership is waiting for you. All right, so we talked about the Andre the Giant Memorial uh, Battle Royal and all its winners and who we think is going to win this year, as well as Monday Night Raw, Sammy and Bronson, Rock and Roman. Or Will uh, Chisholm. A- Will, Chisholm. Will Chisholm sent us a super chat. Oh, there you go. Says, Cody was telling the truth of him having a new deal or he's working. I think he's being truthful. I don't think he's, uh, you know, lying that he signed a new deal on this. That'd be something, that'd be a weird thing to, I mean, whatever, it's wrestling. You can always lie, but it's typically the work is they haven't signed a new deal. The yeah. work is very rarely I've signed a new deal. And, yeah. Oh, nope. Where I, I'm, I actually have it. Peace out. That's a, uh, why the, why? Is there a fire going on, SP3? I guess so. I guess so. I mean, it's New York City, so why not? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, nah, I believe Cody when he says that he's uh, signed a new deal because I that's what I expected. I was like, if Cody is if Cody is going to have any chance of becoming the new undisputed WWE Universal Champion, he had better sign a deal right before WrestleMania. That's perfect timing. Let me sign this new deal. Um, I'm under contract for the next five years. Y'all got nothing to worry about. Y'all can give me the ball. Give me the ball. I'm ready. I'm ready for the ball, coach. That's basically what he's doing by signing a deal right before WrestleMania. I mean, he's he's trying to tell him that, but I think he signed his deal. Like there were reports that he signed it way back in like October, end of the year. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if he uh if that's when they, he actually did sign it or regardless they were trying to lock him in they locked him in he's at least uh at least another couple of years he said it was took some past 40 he's 38 now so it takes him past 40 oh, it'll be there for a little while it would be amazing if like he was working about signing a new deal it's like yeah guys i've signed a new deal i'm gonna be here for a while did double or nothing and just shows up with the with the undisputed WWE Universal <laughs> Championship. Well, WWE would obviously know that he hasn't signed a new deal, so they're not going to put the title on him. But like, well, you just... never know. You never know with this company, man. Rock Rock signed a deal to to work at WrestleMania, and they still had Cody Rose win the Royal Rumble and mess that up for him. I don't believe that. 
I don't believe that Rock. I think Rock showed up after WrestleMania or after Royal Rumble. He saw Cody won. He, he saw no, Cody. Yeah, I, 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 he's I like, I ain't having this. I, I honestly think that it was just a miscommunication that they that TKO agreed to something that wasn't communicated to Triple H. Possibly. I mean, that's <laughs> Rock just came in, went to Shapiro, and he's like, "Hey, I'm coming in. Don't tell anybody." <laughs> Triple H just booking like he's in a book. I don't know nothing about Dwayne. Nobody's told me anything about Dwayne. <laughs> Here comes Rock Raw after Rumble. Well, he did the whole thing on January 1st. He yeah. said, you want to sit at the head of the table? He teased it. He got the ball mo- moving. Triple H he... is probably just like, yeah, of course he's going to yeah. do this. Like He's like, he's like he's yeah, gonna... of course. He's working for WrestleMania 41. I know, yeah. I know. He still needs time to get ready. That's why we didn't even ask him for this year. And then he just finds out after he already booked Cody to win the Royal Rumble. Oh, Rock's going to win. Rock wants, Rock wants in. I love that Rock came in, slang dick around, and it's like, nope. Because The Rock was the most giving of any of the main event stars of the Attitude Era. People say that because he he lost a Hurricane Helms. That's no, it. No. That's it. No, people say that because his his percentage, his winning percentage was awful compared to everybody else. Triple Wins H won all Triple matter. H won all, all the time, pretty much during the attitude era. He beat all the all the stars that were drawing all the money, Austin and Rock all the time. Then you he also lost to like Benoit on TV. He lost to Jericho during that time. He put over all the all the young guys. He's the one that put over Kurt Angle for Kurt Angle to become a main eventer. Like Come on. No, it wasn't just Hurricane. That came in 2003. That was when his reputation was already that he was the most giving giving superstar or the main eventer of the Attitude Era. Rock eviscerated everyone. On the mic? Yeah. But he, he lost was... to everyone in matches. We don't we don't talk about the the one guy, Benoit. We don't talk about him. Kurt Angle was made he didn't need the rock he didn't need the rock he was he was already made he was made. he was an olympic gold medalist yeah sure but he needed he needed to get a win over one of the top guys and the rock was the top guy that he beat he didn't need he didn't need the rock to do that okay (laughs) Rhino, what do you do for out. Rhino? What do you do for Chris Jericho? He did. He lost to Jericho. He Jericho. A, Jericho won his first world title against against The Rock. I mean, he no beat mercy, Rock no mercy. Two thousand one. He beat Rock match. in Austin the same night. Exactly. That was an undisputed title. Exactly. He destroyed Chris afterwards. Jericho his first night. Then he beat. Title. Then he beat him at Royal Rumble two thousand and two. Wins and losses don't matter. Oh my God! Will you? Stop? They don't. Will you stop? They don't. This is like saying John Cena put over Souls to Koa and Austin Theory. What? Where are those two at? Huh? Just How just because doing? just because that those exact wins and losses did not matter doesn't mean that wins and losses do not matter. Wins and losses don't matter. WWE's told us for fifty years that wins and losses don't matter. <laughs> if you if you say so. Kurt Angle was already over. What did he do for Rikishi's career? The Rock. Rikishi did all that for him. Didn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, Rikishi, Rikishi tried him. to kill a man. Rikishi beat him on an episode of Raw. Did Rikishi beat The Rock on Raw? Yeah. How'd that do for his career? Hey, it didn't do much, but it made, but it we took him seriously. Hey, I, I love the I'm a bad man, bad thoughts. Come on, man. That D song was a bop. I uh, didn't care. I didn't thing. care if Rikishi was was not a great made of veteran at that time. I love the theme music. The theme was good. And the all leather jumpsuits. Yo, I, he was looking legit, yo. I love that Rikishi's trying to like, I don't know if he's working or shooting, brother. But, like, he's definitely trying to get into this Uso match at WrestleMania. He's like, just he's trying to book himself just for this so bad. He's like, I just want to bring my boys back together afterwards. Yeah. He's like, make me the ref. 
Just let me be the timekeeper. Put me on call. I don't care. Let me come out with Jay. I do not care. Just get me out here for WrestleMania 40. You're bringing everybody else back. Give me this spot for WrestleMania 40. He's like, I just want one moment. I just want my moment in the sun. One time during this angle. You let Alpha and Sika come out. You ain't let you ain't gonna let me come out. Triple H is like you had one job. It was to murder Steve Austin and you couldn't get it done. <laughs> you definitely you're definitely not coming back. I'm definitely not calling you <laughs> down, dog. You I know one. you did it for the rock, but also like I also put that hit out on Austin. Well, he didn't really do it for the rock. He did it for the money. Yeah. He did it for the money and to get the clout. He was like, I get the clout of running down Stone Cold. People, people don't remember his his reasoning after you know Triple H revealed that he was the one that was behind it the whole time. The most obvious answer ever, bro. When Triple H fell from the forklift, Austin lifted him up in the car and dumped him in Survivor Series, and it's and he's back just like a bandage on his head. Like two weeks <laughs> later, yo, he missed like eight days. He missed like eight days of work. Absolutely rolled. Interview, interfered in Austin, cost him the WWF title against Kurt Angle. I remember that. I remember uh, Jim Ross going apopathic on uh, commentary. He was going crazy. Absolutely rolled. Triple H, the most indestructible man in WWE history. Still true, by the way. Still true. Yeah. It Still. is. It is. Is he going to survive all of us, Triple H is? He's going to be in charge. But I love I love how uh, The Rock always comes in and always makes Triple H uh, feel feel inferior in his role. I'm for that. <laughs> I, I, I do I do enjoy it because I've always been a Rock guy in, instead Rock of a should, Triple H guy. Rock should go to NXT and sling dick on Shawn Michaels. You know he doesn't like Michaels from their time i guess they're like okay now and whatever but like rock's got that he's he's petty enough yeah. to to still hold that just go there and just fuck up all of sean's nxt plans that's what we need he's like he's like this is for uh the the smackdown premiere show <laughs> <laughs> now, michaels was a dick to him back in the day yeah yeah he was. He was. I. I. I just saw. Uh, I think uh, Wrestle Talk did like a video about the Rock and Triple H uh, rivalry, and I got reminded about Rocky Johnson talking about Rock and Michaels fighting after the the SmackDown premiere because he said he kicked them too hard. I was yeah. like, oh man, <laughs> there was so much, so much history between those two. Rock's just got a. He's got a sling dick on Michaels at NXT. Who would Rock like in NXT besides his own daughter? Obviously, Trick. Yeah, see, Michaels likes Trick though. I need like a good divide. Rock sees like Tony D'Angelo. It's like Tony D'Angelo does rule, but he's like, this is the guy right here. You got to make this guy. He's the future. Yeah. He's got to. He's got to beat Ilya. He's like, Let's he's gonna the, be the guy. You got to put up. that guy. No, you know who's gonna see. He's gonna be like. Second generation star, all this size, former football player, just like me, Von Wagner. Come Von on, Wagner. Come on, <laughs> Von. Come on, Von. This is the guy. This is the guy right here. Right here. Gets the big Von Wagner push. Oh, yeah. Did he? The uh, Von. The Von. The Von. <laughs> What's his name? Was on. Uh, was on the the rock show right robert stone wasn't he on yes yes one of the rocks go. reality shows there we go yeah the vaughn and the stone <laughs> robert stone's in rock's ear like let me tell you about old vaughn wagner rocky Dwayne. let me tell you vaughn this is the guy this is the guy you gotta get behind Rock's well like, he's been yeah. watching his tapes of the of the rock that's all he's been he's waiting for his his big push Ivy Nile, Ivy Nile was on Rock's uh, reality show. Like, oh, there you go, Ivy. This is the person right here. You got to get behind Ivy Nile, push mm. her to the top, baby. But she's already on on Raw now. Yeah. Uh, all right. He's gonna he's gonna get her. Uh, she can go back to NXT. Yeah. She ain't doing anything yeah. On Raw. <laughs> Who cares? 
<laughs> like, who cares? She ain't yeah. doing nothing on Raw except nah. for being bullied by Bully Larray. Yeah, but Candice Larray rules though. I I want Candice Larray to to be in the main event of WrestleMania. <laughs> but just bully yourself in there. Yeah, Bully Larray. They've dropped the ball on Candice Larray. I agree. Trying to make her out to be just like, <clears throat> trying to make her to like take advantage of uh, you know opportunities and, and weaknesses and stuff. That's dumb. That's stupid. We see that too often. I need like an actual like bully, Candice Larray, because that first stuff with Maxine where she just cuts that shit off ruled that was so hilarious to me because i was like oh my god they're really using the online discourse for a character but candace yeah. did it so well that i was like okay i'm sold do this more often but now yeah she's just been taking advantage of injuries yeah see like, like i i wanted her to like cut off like kaden carter and katana chance it's like, like all that dancing all you do yeah. is dance you don't care about wrestling Anoski, hit him with the slap be like we're not doing this dance i wanted to like no sell some of these punches and stuff and it's like hey, your punch your working punch sucks <laughs> you're, not, full you're not meta you're not, you're not you're not like, your you're working not. punch is awful kid and it's like come here come here and then just like bam nice forearm like that's how you throw a working like, strike like now lay suzuki. down like lay down suzuki. so i can pin you <laughs> she needs to work like she's suzuki that's yeah. basically that's what I need. It completely breaks that fourth wall. It's like, oh, this is really, really fake. Okay. No, they'd never do it. But like they they basically did it when she's cutting off the backflip. She's like, she's not taking that. She's not that laying was, here for that, that, was... that shitty move that you can't do correctly. It's like it's like, don't don't do it. Stop doing it. Like, like I was so happy when she told her, don't do that. I need her to do like the Samoa Joe like walk away spot. Yeah. Like someone comes off the top for like a moonsault and she just like walks away and looks at him like they're stupid. Like I saw that She's coming. Like, what are you doing? You're doing this stupid moonsault. But they're not gonna do any of these ideas. We're just setting ourselves up for failure here. Uh, she's just gonna get out wrestled by Caden Carter, and then once Caden Carter gets a knee injury, be like, ah, oh, let me take advantage of this. Or or yeah, I see Corey in the chat asking, is Indy uh, going to turn? I don't think so now. I actually think that this is going to lead to their split. Oh, I, Indy doesn't need to turn. Indy can be the, the young the young girl. Under, yeah, I, under yeah I, I think that the... Indy, Indy works better as a as a heel than a, than a baby face. So. Dude, it ruled with the first week when Candice was uh chastising maxine and then indy just kicked her in the face love because no because candace said kick her yeah kick her. <laughs> that's that's what we need just follow my lead. Indy's like the the just the big heavy going around you want to talk about Sean michaels and diesel you know they, they candace, know, candace LeRae and candace and indy which they you know they've alluded to on nxt but like it needs to be like Candice is like 90s Shawn Michaels, just like being a complete dick to everyone. And no one fucks with her because Indy is there. And if they get out of line, like Indy will take care of them. That's what we need. I need Indy or I need Candice again stopping in the middle of the match. Candice is going for one of my favorite spots of all time because no one knew it was a screw up. Michaels just decided slang dick in the middle of SummerSlam 97. Yes. Just off the top rope. Vader move was like an 96. inch out of place. Yo, he it was, he still could have hit the move. He yo, could've. he still could have hit the move. We've seen you adjust in the air. You still could have hit the move. So he jumps down and he kicks it. He says, stupid. And yeah. it kicks him in the face. Oh, my Roll. God. I just, I just watched that last year. It pissed me off. So it much. rolls. So, so I, I rewatched it. Rewatched it last year. So it absolutely off. rules when he does that because no one would have known. He could have just done the move. It would have been fine. And then, but he just jumps down and just kicks him in the head. That's what we need out of Candace. It, it's like that. That I think about, and then uh, the Randy Orton 
the Randy Orton with uh with Kofi Kingston, Kofi Kingston not being in the place for the yeah. punt kick. You could have just hit the RKO. You didn't need to yell, stupid, stupid. Yeah, but they brought that back around. That feud yeah. sucked, but yeah, it wasn't. It, it was. It wasn't good. Uh, uh, that's what we need with Candice though. We need Candice going full '90s Shawn Michaels, just bullying people. I'm down for it. I'm down for Bully Larray, who's not going to be on the Mania card. They're just stuck at uh, three women's matches with the addition of Jade Cargill, who had a really good fifth yeah. debut on the main roster. I think this was like the fifth time she's debuted or something like that. I mean, she was a free agent. Yeah. SP3. She should have done. I don't think they did enough to. Uh... Like she just like made her decision. They just did like a video package. Like Jade Cargill is yeah. coming to SmackDown. They should have done like LeBron the decision. That's what they should have done. I agree. I'm taking my talents to the blue brand. That's what they should have done with Jade. And then, you know, she could do her official contract signing last week and then do all of that. What'd you make of, uh, what'd you make of, uh, I Cargill's promo and then helping Bianca and Naomi? I'm kind of in like, I would say, like, overall, if I had to grade it, it would be, like, a B-. minus. I thought that the entrance was superstar-worthy. They added a lot to, like, the Storm aesthetics and just made it a big deal. I was like, this is a straight-up superstar entrance for her. And, of course, Jay Cargill has one of the best looks ever that a professional wrestler has ever had. So she looked like a million bucks. I like her coming out, signing the contract and stuff. I didn't even need her to cut the promo because, honestly, the promo was the weakest part of the whole debut for me because it felt very scripted by pink by the numbers which is okay you could have a mission, mission statement yeah promo. it's a it's a mission statement promo and nowadays those don't really hit too well so anyway so that's fine i like the uh follow-up with her coming out for bianca and naomi it's exactly what i kind of expected them to do when they announced that she was officially on the smackdown brand and having her official debut on this show i was like well, you got to give her a WrestleMania match if you're debuting her two weeks before the show. And it seems like this is one that's already set up for her where she could just fill a spot. She doesn't have to do much. She can look good in the spots that she's given in this opportunity. And just her standing there with Bianca and Naomi was just so great. It's so great for representation in this match in general when you have on one side Asuka, Kyrie Sane, and Dakota Kai. And on the other side, Naomi, Jade Cargo, and Bianca Belair. Black girl magic guys, as I've been calling them, and I love them pointing to the sign and all the pictures of them just look amazing. This is great. And I expect this uh, trio to get the win because we got to keep Bianca Belair undefeated at WrestleMania for the rate Rhea Ripley matchup. I think they will win. Dakota's probably taking the loss, although I wouldn't mind a Bianca Jade like extended tag team run. I wouldn't mind they, that either. And they win the tag team titles. Naomi does have a, a claim for the tag team title, so she technically never lost them. Uh, no, but she. That's why I think they're. That's why I think they're going to do Bianca and Naomi. Bianca and Naomi. Yeah, I think I they're going to. They're going to keep Jade on her own, and maybe sooner rather than later, like get her into the title picture. I don't know. I don't know if she's going to go into the title picture that quickly, honestly. I mean, maybe. Wouldn't be but... surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Because I don't, because right, right now, like I would say, like coming out of WrestleMania, yeah, you do uh, Bianca and Naomi going for the tag team titles. I, I right now, the perfect person for Jade to go against at coming out of WrestleMania would have been Charlotte Flair, in my opinion. Because that's someone you don't need a title. That's a big enough star, and you can get a couple of months out of a Jade Cargo Charlotte Flair feud. But with Charlotte not here, I don't see the person you do a program with Jade Cargo with on the SmackDown roster, other than someone who's also on the rise, like a Tiffany Stratton, which I wouldn't do that. Everybody else isn't over. Like unless she's back, unless she's in the title picture with Bailey and EO Sky, or is she still feuding with Damage Control coming out of WrestleMania? So no one else, no one else on the SmackDown brand is over. That's kind of where I'm at. Is that you still kind of keep the Damage Control feud 
going because if Naomi and Bianca are going after the tag team titles, I think Dakota and Jade is a nice little matchup. It's an easy, like, you know, Jade's going to win that feud. Dakota, I mean, coming off the knee injury is, is, is tough. Like, but Dakota's looked, looked fine in the matches that she's had since returning. Dakota's a really good worker, really smart worker to, and someone who can like really make Jade look good as yeah. well. So I, I assume Jade is going to uh, work live events. Maybe she won't. I don't know. Um, but Dakota, someone who is, would be good to work with at live events because yeah. Dakota's just really good, especially in that, in that role. Like she made Raquel look really good in that role. So I think that would be a good first program. And, for and they're going to, I know they're definitely going to shuffle up the roster, you know, with the draft coming after WrestleMania. So this is all me talking about the current SmackDown roster. I but forgot that, about the draft. Yeah, that, but that's a good shout with uh, Dakota Kai. But I really feel like the, the Bailey EO Sky program is going to continue coming out of WrestleMania, but Bailey will end the feud as the new champion and then probably still feud with damage control via Dakota Kai. So I feel like Dakota is going to need a couple of wins before she's in the main title program. I don't know if they're going to go with a full fledged. I mean, I think they should. I think it makes sense to go. I think there's a reason why they did a non finish for that matchup when they went against each other. Because that was that's been the people that's been doing the promo work for the WrestleMania feud. They just gave EO finally a chance to do her old spiel. And that was great. I, I thought she was really good in that promo when they let her speak Japanese, had the sun, subtitles, it was good. The brawl afterwards, it just, it was an overall good segment, but it, it kind of felt like too little too late. It just feels like like we talked about on Friday. Like they took their foot off the gas pedal on this feud after like two weeks. They did two weeks of great angles that drew great ratings as well and got the crowd invested and then took their foot off the gas then eventually had Dakota turn hit, turn against Bailey. By then it was like, okay. And then they made it about Bailey versus damage control and Bailey getting help from Naomi and Bianca, which was really setting up another matchup and not really building the main title feud. I liked what they did on Friday to try to get it back around to Bailey and yeah. EO. You know, they got one more segment on SmackDown. We'll see what they end up doing there. Yeah, I think it might be a Bailey apology to Bianca um, and Bianca maybe accepting it, trying to make amends on that. Jade should just be like, I don't care about any of y'all. I'm just here to look good, win gold. Like right now I'm with y'all, but this don't think this is an everlasting thing. Don't think this is an everlasting thing. Uh, the, the ITW anonymous GM has messaged me and said kind of agree at this point they took their foot off the gas because of the cody rock situation they didn't want a second clamoring of the women should have one of the main yeah. events yeah no yeah, no no she's one thousand percent right but they were never gonna they were never gonna usurp the rock and no, a they, no, event. No, no, no they weren't they weren't but it feel it it feels it felt very it felt very purposeful that they did what they did as far as taking their foot off the gas. It like it started when like after two weeks when they had those great angles first with Bailey realizing that damage control was going to turn on her. And then which I, I, I said from the very beginning of that whole angle, they didn't build to that properly. We should have saw multiple backstage segments of Bailey coming on to things instead of backstage segment. She hears them talking, talking crap about her and then immediately do the angle. They didn't build to it well. So I thought that was a mistake, but that was a great angle. And then they followed it up with Dakota's response to the great angle, which was another great angle as well. And then it was like, I, the fans started saying, oh, why isn't Bailey on the posters? Why aren't y'all promoting Bailey? She won the Royal Rumble. She should main event. They heard a little bit of that on social media. And they was like, you know what? All right. <laughs> we, 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 we were going to push it real good. But y'all, we did good, two good angles. And y'all going to say that? Nah, we, we taking our foot off the gas. As long as Bailey gets a Paramore entrance, I don't really care if that they took their foot off the gas. That's all I want for Bailey. 
Absolutely. Well, good he wants that. Bailey. He wants that, so I and want, I want it Bailey too. to have the Paramore song. Whether Paramore is there playing it live, which would be great, or they just get the rights to this song. That's all I care about. I think it should, uh, the match, uh, Bailey and EO should open night two. I think Becky and Rhea is going to open night one. Becky yeah. is already like publicly stated yeah. that's what she wants. So I think that's going to open night one. Bailey and EO opening night two does make sense. It's possible Seth and Drew open night two, though. That is true. That is true. I think I, I would I would believe in Seth and Drew further down the card than I would uh, Bailey and EO. I want the crowd to be up for Bailey and EO. So that's why I would say they open night two. I think Seth and Drew, regardless of where they're at in the card, they can bring the crowd back, especially with Punk being involved. I think they would be fine if they didn't get the open spot. I think that Bailey and EO, they probably need it more to take that the open of night two. Punk commentary should play throughout the arena. Like just his commentary. You don't hear Cole, McAfee, Gray, whoever else is on on doing the call. Like it's just Punk's commentary playing throughout the arena. <laughs> That would be hilarious to me, but <laughs> that would be hilarious. Um, I, 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 won't, I wouldn't mind that. It's CM Punk. He's going to be entertained in our commentary. He's not, he's not even on like commentary. Like he just has the microphone. Like don't put him on a headset. Yeah. Just, just give him like a, a live microphone. That just and he's, but he's responding to the commentator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's still like on commentary, but he also has the mic. So you hear it through the arena and of course on television. I guess it would like double come out. I don't know. I, I assume would, they have. He would also. He would also be that. the ring announcer. Would he also? He be could the do ring, ring announcing. That's fine. Yeah. There you go. Ring announcing is so like pointless. So it was like common. Like, get. I'm talking like guest ring out. Like, okay, cool. You're the guest ring announcer. Like, you're the guest uh, timekeeper. Okay. What do we do? What? Will Chisholm says, "Y'all think Becky is leaving, or is she doing the Randy Orton play?" I don't think Becky's going anywhere. She ain't going nowhere. Like, 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 I, don't, like I don't even know why, why that was even a question, a question. I mean, she says she has two months left on her contract, which yeah. I believe, but I don't think she's... She she said it before. Is like She's going to stay with WWE. It's just a matter of how much she's going to get and what kind of schedule yeah. she's going to work. I think she wants to stay. I think... They want her to stay. I am a little concerned when it comes to just like TKO and how they treat people. And they're not afraid to cost cut. We've seen it with UFC of like, yeah, it's a machine. We're going to keep selling no matter what. We don't need are, this person are, to sell. Are they going to well match or are $1 over what Mercedes got from AEW? Because Bailey, I mean Becky, before Charlotte got her new deal, was the highest paid woman in professional wrestling. But Charlotte got a new deal, then Mercedes got her deal with AEW. Does Becky either match their the amounts that they got or one dollar more or below them? What do you think? What do you think TKL is gonna be at? Because we know with a lot of the free agents, they kind of lowballed, but they did have a bunch of the re-signings at the end of 2023 with a bunch of like Ray, Dom, Charlotte, Bailey, all these people. So and now we hear Cody has re-signed as well. Do you think that Becky's gonna be in that range or higher? I think I'm not gonna pretend like I know how much all of these men and women are making. No, no, no. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't know either. All I know is that we, we know that Charlotte got re-signed. We know Mercedes got got signed by AEW. We know reports have said Mercedes is one of, if not the highest paid woman in professional wrestling, and Charlotte was in that range as well. So all I want to know is that I know that Becky was higher than them before those contracts. So is she going to be back higher or in that range? I think she's going to be, I think she should be, I'll say, higher. I I don't know what Mercedes is making compared to Charlotte. I think yeah. Becky should be just from a WWE point of view, because AEW has their own structure with how, how they're paying everybody. From a WWE standpoint, 
I think Becky should be the highest paid woman and comparable to even the highest paid men. Like I that, that's where I would put Becky. I said this on, on, on Twitter. I'll say it here. I've never seen someone do as much media as Becky did last week. I've listened to so many Becky Lynch interviews. I saw so many Becky Lynch interviews. Like I know she was promoting her book, but in promoting the book, she's obviously also promoting WWE. She's promoting WrestleMania 40. She did so much. I've never, I've never seen a media blitz like that with like every outlet you could think of too. It wasn't just like, Oh, random wrestling podcast. A she's on the today show. She's talking to New York Times, Entertainment Tonight. Like she was on some mainstream outlets. On top of that, to, tomorrow, Tamron Hall. I think I'm yeah. not sure I get that name right. Like, you know, she was she was on some like top level outlets when it came to, and then she was doing random wrestling podcast A. So like she was doing anything and everything when it came to promotion. And they don't have, they do have. A, a, a few people like that yeah but when it when it came to just in a short truncated time like that i haven't seen that they have people like drew will do a lot the the that's the the bit started of drew was doing so many during the yeah. pandemic is like oh another drew, drew mcintyre interview bianca bianca cody, does a ton yes cody does a ton now um Miz, but in a Miz, Miz historically Yes, yeah. like they have guys. people, they yeah. have people they can put out there to to do this kind of stuff. But I've never seen it in such a short period of time. But yeah, I the do way think... the way she did it was like it was on the level I would say like John Cena when he came out with his album back in two thousand five. And media is a lot different now than it exactly was then. Like, but she is someone much like so. You make a good point with like Miz and, and Cody and. And Drew, obviously, these are people you can trust to put out there in any situation on television, not only WB television, but, you know, media, uh, talking to media, going out there for press events, going out there for public appearances. This is someone you can trust in that spot who is also proven to be a ratings draw with what she did in NXT, who is been at the top of the card for the past five years now, five plus years with everything. Like I think she should be the highest paid woman in, 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 in wrestling. I agree. And I think she should be on the level of her male counterparts, whether that be drew yeah. Seth. I know Roman's on like a, a different strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, right. so there's, there's like tiers. If you're like, if you're talking about S tier contracts, Roman, Brock is still up there, even though they're kind of pushing him to the side. He still is under contract. He's got one of the biggest contracts in that company. Roman, uh, Cody probably with this new deal would be yeah. Closer. Cody's gonna be on that. He's level. gonna be closer to that level than he was before, definitely. Yeah, Co- Cody's definitely on that level. Orton um, maybe too, because he's been there long enough. Yeah, Orton's got the historically. Yeah. Uh, He's got history on his side. Yeah, somebody else said Randy. Yeah. But I think Becky should be very much on that level. She's earned it. She's going to continue to prove it. And I mean, Punk. she... Punk is another one. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Probably. He probably got something close. In, in between. In between that level and the Seth, Drew, Becky, Charlotte level. Well, I think Punk's deal actually kind of sets a standard for kind of a drew deal and a Mm -hmm. Seth deal because their contracts are coming up um you know in in the next few months with everything and i think if i'm drew and seth and i'm like okay how much did punk make yeah you gotta you gotta give me more than that because i understand punk's gonna come in and he moves some merchandise and stuff he ain't been here the this past decade busting his ass like we have to build the company what it's done punk ain't like punk's actually doing a media appearance today so yeah, it's not the Ariel best on my part. but yeah oh boy that's gonna be uh yeah wrestlemania week it's gonna we're kicking it off with uh 
pretty big interview here at two o'clock. Um, but yeah, Punk, but Punk isn't gonna do the type of media that Drew and Seth do. Right? He's not gonna be out in front weekly doing this stuff. Like this is his first big appearance since returning, and that was November. He's done some like WWE interviews. Like he did the NHL show with Jackie Redman. He's been on like WWE, like uh, YouTube stuff. But like this is his first like non WWE type of interview. Oh, I don't know how many he's going to be doing moving forward. Drew and Seth, they're going to be doing a ton. Those those are people you throw out there on Entertainment Tonight and uh, the Today Show, Fallon. And all that stuff. And those are the people who have been doing that for the past five years. So if I'm them, I'm looking at Punk's deal and I'm like, yeah. And Punk ain't working house shows. You know, he worked two, but he <laughs> certainly hasn't been making the towns over the years. So yeah, if I'm if I'm those two, I'm looking at Punk's deal and being like, whatever he's getting, that's where I need the dollar more on on there. So I do think Punk's deal is kind of a barometer for some of these people. Uh, and certainly like if I'm them, I would look at that deal. Like, okay, what's he getting? All right, this is what I want. Yeah. If I'm a Drew McIntyre, if I'm a Seth Rollins, yeah, those are the guys that's looking at punk's deal. And they're like, yeah, I want that one plus $1 more uh, because I'm going to be working a lot more. You can trust me a lot more. I'm a lot more reliable. So yeah, that, that makes sense to me. Yeah. I mean, they're, like Seth had a knee injury, but he's back. He, he Drew, still he still made all the tapings pretty much. So yeah. Drew historically stays pretty healthy. I mean, yeah. we I can't recall like a big it's Drew McIntyre injury. Since, since he came back, it was only the injury in NXT when he was NXT champion. Right. He had right. Match with Andrade. Yeah. Yeah. And that was obviously like five years ago, six years yeah. ago at this point. So yeah, it's yeah, historically, uh, Drew has been pretty healthy. Seth is a little in and out injury prone, but yeah. he more than makes up for it when he is healthy. And he always works his, his butt off to make, come back as fast as possible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Will Chisholm, another super chat, says, what do you think of Day saying that WWE may take out Theory and Waller of the latter match? I don't know how much trust I have in Dave when it comes to I some mean... of these reports. All you can say is that uh, Dave has not had the best track record when it comes to reports as of late, as of late. Uh, but um, I, di I did find it funny that uh, Grayson Waller put out the tweet that uh, the A-Town Down Under is the best tag team in the world at a Wrestling Observer newsletter. That was a nice little response to that. And I don't understand why, because if you are going to take them out, it wouldn't be to put in pretty deadly. It would have just been the Street Profits beat them, and you should probably put the Street Profits in that ladder match. But instead, the Street Profits are going to be in that heatless feud <laughs> with final testament man when that happened on friday i was like this is still going on this feud is still going on you guys have have spent more time and put more effort into trying to get this feud over when it's not over than you have to actually giving bobby lashley and the street profits a name like they've been together for nearly i have never seen a stable together for nearly a year in WWE without giving them a name. Like I've seen them do tag teams that don't have a name. That's fine. It seems, but I've never seen them have a stable for almost a year and not give them a name. We've had them online, say the pride. I yeah, said the, pride. the most mean. obvious thing was street business. That should have just been the thing to do. Street business. Street business was the way That's to go. Up. I heard yeah. some people saying hurt profits. I never liked how that sounded, but there was multiple chances. They have not established that. There's still street profits and Bobby Lashley. I like carrying cross was like, now no one makes it to WrestleMania. It's like, good job, buddy. You've <laughs> was this your end game? Is like we're gonna I'm gonna ensure that no that none of us are on WrestleMania. <laughs> like, shouldn't he have 
shouldn't you have aimed it at like you're not getting what you're you want at WrestleMania? Exactly. Like he says, none of, of us are on WrestleMania. Yeah, <laughs> like instead of like going after the tag team titles, like which is what you were aiming for, you know. Now instead, like you got to face us. But now it's like now no one's on WrestleMania. <laughs> it's like all right, cool. So nice, like if nice we job. suck, you suck too. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I assume man. they'll get a match at WrestleMania, maybe. Yeah, I think Dave's reported that it's supposed to be like a Philadelphia street fight, which probably is their best chance to get over with the crowd in Philadelphia. A big plunder brawl with all the big guys kind of going into things, running into barricades and breaking some chairs and some tables. Street they can Poppins have a nice... will do some cool stuff. Yeah, Montez will do the big frog splash and put them through a table. So, yeah. It'll be fun. It'll it'll, it'll be fun. It'll like, be fun. But the feud is not over. No one cares. We, it, it, there's a whole, there's a bunch of like like uh, matches on the WrestleMania card already. Where I'm just like, this feud is ice cold. But I know when the bell rings on April six or April seven, the Philadelphia crowd will be into it, and it has a chance to be really good or even great or match of the year candidate. But there's a lot of those feuds and matches. I'm just like, oh, this is a cold one. What's cold to you, SB3? I'm mainly looking at Jimmy and Jay. Wow. It's just cold. It's cold. Like, and like, I, I love that there's like certain WWE fans that don't want to admit it. Like, they don't want to admit it to themselves that it's a cold feud because we all know when the bell rings on April 6th and April 7th, it's going to be fantastic. Jay and Jimmy are going to leave it all out there, and it may just steal the show. But we cannot deny WWE doesn't even know what story they want to tell with this. Movie. They, they literally, they, I, I tell you, there is a great way to do a Jay versus Jimmy storyline. There's a great way to do twin versus twin. Brother you tell me yours, brother, and I'll tell you mine. Long time tag team partners. I mean, my idea was. That they should have at SummerSlam have Jimmy cost Jay the matchup but by accident. And then they should have done Jimmy and Jay. Well, now you're like trying the... to retcon things. Can't do that. There's I said there's a way to do Jimmy and Jay. It's not the way they did it. Okay. You okay. the way to do Jimmy and Jay is not to do a random heel turn that never made sense to anyone. Then keep them separated for six months. Separated for six months where they get no significant wins, either one of them. Either one of them get no significant singles wins on their well, own. Done that with all, Jimmy. All Jay, all Jay did. No, Jimmy didn't get a win. On a, That's what a, I'm saying. A significant win on his own. Jay didn't get a significant win on his own. Who did Jay win? He won the tag team title. Well, That's it. That's not. I said a significant singles win. I, that's why I specified. Oh, I, I said, my sorry, word. sorry, sorry. My 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 feed cut for a second. I thought you were giving like your booking ideas. Like, well, they did that with Jimmy. They didn't give him any significant wins. No, they're, like, like you were talking about what WWE actually did. Sorry, yeah, I'm, I'm, they, I'm they, talking about what they actually did. Together. They okay, this sorry. is what they did. They separated them for six months. Didn't give them any significant wins. Then decided to put them together again at WrestleMania season, and they just like up. Oh, here we go. And then they totally retconned the whole turn two weeks ago. And still, no one on WWE TV has specified that Jimmy Uso was lying and gaslighting Jay when he said that you were the one that came up with the idea to turn on the bloodline. Because Jimmy Uso is actually the person who came up with the idea when he came back in 2021 with nobody's bitch shirt. He wanted to be nobody's bitch, even though Jay was a loyal soldier in the bloodline. He came up with the idea. The idea did not start at Roy Rumble when Jay walked out. It started way before that, and, J and Jimmy just followed it up, and he was the first one to turn on the bloodline. But he totally gaslit Jay Uso, and Jay didn't respond to it. Commentary didn't mention it, so they have totally retconned the story. Here's what they should do tonight on Raw. I assume Jimmy's going to show up. Jay's there. Jay comes out. He does the Uzi. Who's, the, who's that? I like that dance. It's very cool. Then Jimmy comes out. Jimmy's like, we ain't twins. Jay's like, what? Jimmy's like, we ain't twins, dude. We were born from the same womb, but we were born minutes apart. 
that ain't twins. It was a different birthing process. And Jay is like, huh? We can be twins. We can be, you can be twins if you were born years apart. If it was born from the same womb. And Jimmy's like, nah, that ain't how twins work. This is this is not a promo exchange. This is the new day <laughs> arguing about how twins work. Stop it. What they really need to do, what they really need to do is just have Jay come out, say that he that Jimmy was gaslighting him and that it was Jimmy. That but that's what Jimmy Jimmy's doing here. He's gaslighting him saying they ain't twins. He's saying we ain't really twins. And then he should say, we always said it was womb to the tomb. And I'm going to put you in the tomb this coming Saturday. We are no longer brothers. We are no longer twins. It was just like, we ain't twins, dude. Jay is like, what? You can be twins even if you were born years apart if you come from the same womb. <laughs> You're ridiculous. I can't, I can't, I can't help you. <laughs> then I just need Biggie. <laughs> then I just need Biggie out there. Like, are y'all deaf? <laughs> <laughs> you sound they crazy. Ruled. <laughs> they ruled so much in that exchange. So so y'all cannot be this stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so great. This is how I'd book the feud. Sounds right. Sounds about right. Have to me. Jimmy say they are not twins. That's it. Womb mates is really good. <laughs> womb mates. We've just been womb mates. We were just womb mates. That's all we were. <laughs> it's just the Bellas feud. Yeah, it's just the Bellas feud. <laughs> you should have died in the womb. Oh my God, that line. I'll never forget. <laughs> should have died in the womb. But yeah, that's cold. AJ and uh, LA Knight, I think they've been yeah. doing a better job the last couple of weeks of trying to not make that cold. And I think that uh, the addition of Street Profits and Bobby Lashley versus the Final Testament will avoid them from being the coldest feud at WrestleMania. So AJ and uh, LA Knight, at least they've been showing more effort to turn that one around since the home invasion. Oh, AJ is going to come out with this new theme and the crowd's not going to react at all. And then that match is just dead on arrival. <laughs> yeah, like I heard somebody, somebody told me, oh, I think AJ and LA Knight's going to be a great match. I was like, oh. I was like, oh, really? I don't. <laughs> I think it's going. I think it's going to be good, but I don't think we're. I don't think anybody's going to remember it by the end of night two. AJ's best WrestleMania match is still against Shane McMahon. Yeah, that fact. Yeah, people don't want to. People don't want to come to grips with. What's the competition? What's the what's the competition for AJ Styles at WrestleMania? A throwaway. I mean, the Boneyard the match. Card. I mean, I, I'm I'm talking about a match that didn't take two days to film. An yeah. actual wrestling match. I'm not talking about a movie. I'm I'm talking about an actual wrestling match. That there's no competition outside of the Shane McMahon matchup. Chris Jericho, that was good, but forgettable. I don't remember that match? They had a match at WrestleMania. Yeah, that was his first WrestleMania, 32. Uh, uh, 34 was the Nakamura match that was disappointing. One of the most that was one of my most disappointing WrestleMania matches ever for me because I was there live and I was looking forward to that and then it let me down. Uh, 35 Randy Orton, which was forgettable. I, I know most of y'all were like, "Oh, really?" Versus Randy they were Orton, blinded by the lights. Um, then he got uh, what was it? 36 was the boneyard match. 37 was he on 37? I don't think he was. Oh, no, that was him and Omos versus New Day. <laughs> that match didn't rule. <laughs> that was fun. It was fun. Uh, 38 was Edge. It was, it was huh? Fun. And a match, was, yeah. Edge, Edge, uh, Edge, and, and AJ Styles at 38. I don't remember any any match. That's when that, that's when Priest turned and uh, joined Edge in the Judgment Day. Right, right. I don't remember any Adam Copeland match. They're all the same. Oh God, his hating ass. Um, uh, can 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 I tell you how disgusted I am by this Adam Copeland House of Black feud? This is specifically aimed against me this is 100 percent a shot at me of let's put copeland against house of black no one wants this 
No one needs to see this. They're dragging Eddie Kingston. I, every, and a lot Bristow of people got excited. I saw so it. many people post a picture of Malachi Black and Adam Copeland. They're all wrong. All right. The people who want this have some type of just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not here to shame them, but they're wrong. And I don't understand their taste. It's going to be not great. I Malachi thought, I thought, I thought, the, the, I thought, thing I thought the match, the match with Matt, Matt Cardona was actually really damn good. Yeah, and good. Crazy. Bring in Cardona to feud with Edge. I don't need Malachi Black and House of House of Black to feud with them because they're gonna do a bunch of lore stuff. They're gonna they're gonna bring up Malachi's gonna be like it'll be your day of judgment. Ha 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 ha. And then Adam Copeland he's gonna do the friggin yeah I did the bug eyes that time Malachi Black you tried to turn me to the dark side. You tried to take me to a place I said I wasn't gonna go, but I had to go against Christian Cage, and I vowed I was not going to go back there. You want to take me to a day of judgment? You want to take me into your black house? That is not going to happen anymore with me, Malachi Black. Sucks. Look at my hair. My God. But that's why you added Eddie Kingston and Mark Briscoe because then he had Mark. Yeah, Kingston. even Eddie I'm Kingston. Beating the like... I'm gonna be the damn beat it out of beat them houses, the house of torture, house of black house of all of them. I'm gonna beat all the houses. And then Eddie say, Oh, you wanna do all this Anokiisms and all this Muda stuff? You wanna do the great kabuki and all that out there? Whoop your ass. Yeah. Yeah, so Eddie Kingston is like, Yeah, that. your spooky magic shit sucks. I'm just here to punch you in the face. Good. That's what I need. I don't I try to get my hair on track. Jeez. Adam <laughs> Copeland. Look at this. All right. The, oh, my God. Adam Copeland and House of Black is a personal attack at me. It's good. It's it good. I, I, like the, I like the matchup uh, coming up at uh, AEW Dynasty. I honestly feel like House of Black should win it, though. So Look, the wrestling will be fine all of these guys very great wrestlers house of black and their spooky stuff just i got no time for it i got no time for it doing less spooky stuff and more they've been putting three people through flaming tables and attacking uh, attacking people so i i'm fine i'm fine with the uses of House of Black. It's much improved from the spooky nonsense how it started off in 2022. They're going to bring it back around with Copeland because you know Copeland wants to do that stuff. He's going to do the floating head promo. No, he'll do the he'll and probably he'll probably say he want to do the mist and show like a different darker side to himself. That's what they're rude probably, Copeland. They'll probably, they'll probably do Malachi versus uh, Copeland at uh, Double or Nothing. Brood Cope. Is that what we're going to get? Oh, wow. He's gonna come out with gang bro. We'll finally get the gang. Look, bro. if you use the brood theme, fine, but I don't know if they got the rights to that one. But like, I don't. They probably, they probably bought it in a bulk deal with uh, the Hardys thing. Well, the Hardys was uh, just like uh, public domain. I know that's all that was. Ah uh, man, I saw when the moment the lights went out and Malachi showed up in the middle of the ring, I was like, this seems like a very cool match that I just hope they get to the match. And I have no interest in everything leading up to the match. And then Eddie and Mark came out and I was like, Hey, cool. Aren't you guys fighting in a week at Supercard of honor? And they mentioned like, that. Yeah. We're in, we're not going to, I'm not going to deal with this Copeland slander. He had a, a really damn good matchup with Matt Cardona teased the potential, even better matchup with Malachi black. It's going to be a banger six man tag at AEW dynasty. And I felt, I felt like the, the, the overall collision episode uh, on Saturday was good. I, I was, a, it was a little off for me because I didn't watch it live. I watched it all afterwards. Cause I went out on, uh, 
this weekend because it was Easter weekend. So I went out with some family and stuff. So I missed it live watching it back. I thought it was a pretty good episode. I thought the opener was really damn good. Probably the match of the night. And I thought the main event was also good with the uh, Blackpool Combat Club and Shibata versus Righteous and Archer. And shouts out to Brian and Claudio going from Mexico to Canada in 24 hours to work both of those matches. But that CMLO main event, oh, my God. Did you watch that, Jeremy? I've not seen the CMLO main event. You have to watch that. I I said it on uh, Twitter. I'll say it here. It's like it's the energy of that crowd and the crowd noise I have not seen for a multi-man matchup since, like, Canadian Stampede back in 1997 oh, wow. okay. like it's like loud especially if you turn it up because i had my my tv low and i was like oh man it doesn't sound like they're that loud i heard it was going to be loud then i turned it up and i'm like oh okay now i hear it um <laughs> and like the, the just brian was in the zone just going into his heel mode playing like american dragon heel ROH 2006 Brian Danielson in Mexico. Like he's doing the yet the C versus no chance with Mystico. That's like my favorite part of matchup. It's no wrestling. There was a, some great wrestling in the matchup. My favorite part is them doing a C versus no uh battle during the matchup. For sure. It's oh, Monday. He, he don't he don't <laughs> care to say hi to me. Oh, the things nice to see you too, Sean. We're share Delaware. I've got some news I want to break. <laughs> That'll be tomorrow. We're going to play too hot to handle great. mobile tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, won't be here tomorrow. Um, I mean, this is Jeremy, this is your WrestleMania week as well. I'm giving you like you are the lead in to two major things on this show or on this, this network at noon Eastern on Fightful. A 90 second interview with Cody Rhodes that I filmed several months ago. <laughs> Never been done before. Never been done before. We talk about 2K24, R-Truth, and J.D. McDonough's head. It's a good time. Then Wednesday, the hump goes live immediately after In the Weeds. Wow. How about that? We're back on Fight Flover Booked on Tuesday. Or Wednesday. Main channel channel Monday for today. Main channel Monday, it is. Uh, Main channel Monday. I'll tell you something that gets on my nerves. I posted a little teaser about Bo Dallas because we have an update over there. People go, <laughs> can't, can't get me, April Fools. Yeah, that's what I'm in the business of doing, guys. Making uh, my living just doing fucking Somebody April did Fools that. Joke. I I think it was... Uh, I forgot which account. I already forgot. But Wrestle they vote. did... Was it WrestleVotes? Okay. Yeah. yeah listen, they did. I met them. Like them. They don't make their living doing this. I get it. Anybody that makes their living doing this that does that, come on, get the hell out. I was so annoyed already. Like, we did an April Fool's joke on this show because I didn't have a co-host, but I had SB3 the entire time. But, like, actually trying to trick people, like, news people and fans with, like, news is just, what are we doing? I hate April Fool's. It's the dumbest holiday. It's not even a holiday. Somebody made it up. Uh, I'll tell you when there was a good April Fool's joke, though, when I had teased for weeks that I was making a move in my career. And then on April 1st, I I revealed that I was now you could find my work at ringsidenews.com. And I had registered ringside news with a Z and it directed to Fightful and still does to this day, I believe, if you go. (laughs) Very nice. (laughs) ringside news with a z doc it sure as hell does <laughs> and i took a, a a profile picture like old fella who, whose name will not be ever mentioned uh on our air uh for, for legal reasons for one but <laughs> that one went over well other than and that was that one made me go you know what i'm done after that i don't need any more ufc did an april fool's joke saying they'd signed Fedor and they were going to do a the fight in Russia. This ran on UFC.com. This was years ago. Oh boy. But like, it was actually, I've actually stolen this bit because it was clever of like the first line in every paragraph. So it started, the first paragraph was A, second one was P. Like, so it spelled mm-hmm. out April Fool's. I actually yeah. did that bit last year with uh, Batista when he said he was doing a stand-up special and it was an April Fool's joke. So yeah. I ran that article. Like some of them can be fun, but if you're like trying to do news and you're trying to do April Fool's like news stuff, 
saying specifically saying WrestleMania is going to move from the Lincoln Financial yeah. Field to Wells Fargo Center. That's not funny. Exactly. <laughs> You're just you're you're you wouldn't be out of the ordinary though. I mean, it would be these days. Uh, yeah, Maybe there were threats on Sergeant Slaughter. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened. Yeah, that's all that happened. It was threats on Roman's life, so they had to move it. Man, Sean, how was your weekend? Did you do anything fun? Oh, I I feel worse physically after that one spot than I did really? after the entire Shaza match. Yeah. I mean, Hornswoggle stiffed you on the choke slam. My God, oh, damn. no. Um, I mean, the choke slam wasn't like it wasn't fun or anything. <laughs> it was people were like, "Oh, well, he's a little person." I'm like, "Yeah, I, I got up a, a good amount on that choke oh, slam. Like, God. it was more than just a regular bump." But I got my ass whipped by Levi Everett. Like, he laid him in on me. Uh, and he wasn't supposed to be there for that that spot, and somebody had to come get him. <laughs> so those were rough. Then the uh, the spot over the top rope, but like. With Shaza, I didn't bump that much. Like, I'm kind of, I'm actually kind of used to being like kicked in the chest and the the canes and stuff. Like, we did all that with martial arts training and all that stuff. So honestly, those were the things that were m- most easy for me to transition to when I, I came back. Before I stopped wrestling, bumping didn't hurt at all. Now it always hurts. Every single bump hurts a lot. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't feel great, but hey, you know what? I got another one coming up on, I believe it's April 21st. Yeah, yeah April head to head 21st. with Dynasty. There yeah, listen, go. listen, if you want to skip AEW Dynasty, actually, uh, to be honest with you, you people could go to Paul Cade and then drive right up the interstate to St. Louis and make it in time for AEW Dynasty. I'm sure tons of people will do that. Val Capone says, Levi, don't play. Let me tell you. He was amped up both before and afterwards. He goes, <laughs> Sean, sorry. I didn't know I was, wasn't supposed to be there for that spot. I was like, it's okay. <laughs> but he's a black label pro, pro regular, and I wasn't going to no sell his offense because one, it was really good looking offense. <laughs> it was like really good looking strikes. But uh, yeah, man. Don't tempt me into like making the towns for Paul Cade and then right up to Dynasty. I've done this. Do before. it. Do it. Listen, I'm I'm coming back for Mania this weekend. It's so funny. I was on with like Rick and Cresta and Iridian. And they're like, oh, when when how long are you staying? And I was like, Saturday. Everybody from Fightful is like going like to this thing. What am I gonna do? Have Alex Palowski review WrestleMania? I'm sure the, <laughs> the most perfect ending to a thing could happen. He'd be like, Well, that sucked. <laughs> that was garbage. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that would have oh, been great. Man. I would have watched that show. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but um, yeah, man. I'm pumped. When are you pumped when are you leaving? For yeah. Wednesday. Leaving, uh Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon ish evening. Gotcha. gotcha. Nice. Are you checking out are you going to any of the other shows? Uh, Wally Mania, Monster Factory. I may or may not be doing something there. I'm not wrestling, to the best of my knowledge. Um, You're gonna fight John Alba. I will support John Alba. He's my friend. And you, who else? Is my friend, Shaza McKenzie. She's wrestling there, so no. I would like to go there and support her. Maybe I'll toss her a boomerang into the ring and help her cheat to win. And I, I told her, you know what? I know it's intimidating being up against a younger, more athletic, more famous person in Notorious Mimi who has already had more success in her career than Shaza, but that's okay. I'm there to support her because I'm her friend. Um, I will be going to WrestleCon. I'm, so I've only got my hotel till Saturday, so I'll probably check out 11 or 12. My flight's at like 3, so I'll have a little bit of time there to do something, but. Andrew Zarian says, Sean. There you go. And he sent a super chat. Yeah. Oh, okay, tomorrow's a big day. Yeah, it's not April Fool's Day. We might have a little something to announce tomorrow. Ooh. I nice teaser. Nice teaser. I'm not excited. You're not excited? <laughs> you, no, I'm kidding. I messaged Zarian. You, you aren't excited for Maggie to become director of content at Fightful? Is nice. she replacing me? Oh, good luck. Nice. <laughs> 
Like I got Drew McIntyre retweeting us, and then uh, you know, I, I we, Seth we could just should hire me. The Brian Danielson articles would just be replaced by horny Wardlow articles. <laughs> Well, that's going to be tougher. He does like no media and is barely on the TV show. So, (laughs) good luck. Fair. Fair. (laughs) He made a post. It's going to be about about his tweets and his posts. He breathed. There you go. (laughs) Uh, I'll catch you guys later. Bye, Sean. See you, Sean. Uh, A Shock, it says, and Miro, again, good luck. Does no media, not on the show. I think I, they, I think I was a part of the last media that Miro did. Just when I was World's End was his last show, right? Yeah, but I don't think he did any media for that show. I don't think he did either. He like doesn't. <laughs> he did some he, media every now and again, but yeah, he hasn't even been. Yeah, back in like either. back in like 2022 was like the last time. Is this being announced that. tomorrow? I like I know when the premiere date is. I didn't realize oh. it was being announced. Tomorrow. That makes sense. Oh snap! Very upset. Oh snap! <laughs> <laughs> no, please do not report April Fools that I'm very upset because I'm reporting. I messaged Zarian last night. Means, uh, pissed. I messaged Zarian last night, and I was I just I just I, I sent him just a, a, a miss his beautiful eyebrows, and uh, we, we chatted for a little bit. But yeah, I know what the announcement is. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it'll be it'll be very fun for everybody. Uh, I suspect you'll see Andrew Zarian still on this show moving forward at least he's contractually obligated to still appear on this show moving when forward. can i get a contract sean i want a contract too he's gone he doesn't listen he doesn't listen to the oh, show he damn. shows up and then he leaves he doesn't actually watch this show that would be foolish why would you do that i gotta talk to nobody G- should Zarian. watch this show i gotta talk to zarian then yeah, give zarian me, knows give me give me a contract zarian here zarian, or... got, you could have my job this week it's, I don't want it this week. I'm good. I got. I got I'm, already, <laughs> I'm already director of content for another place. So I'm oh, two every places. ever two, play, two every, other places. Everybody wants to work until it's time to work. SV3, you can. You can I, I gotta work. I week. gotta work this week. I gotta direct some content on two different channels, three different channels actually. I wish I could just direct content and not like do the content. Yeah, I wish I can. I wish I would only direct content. And yeah, do content, and I didn't have to write. Right. right. If I could just like yeah. tell people what to do, that'd be great. See, that'd see, be fantastic. You, you more than anyone understand that the, the writing part feels like work. Like, like, like that's like, like this, that, I'm, especially being on here, like talking to you or talking to a Romeo or Jimmy Macarim. That's fine. That's a great day. That's, if well, I, I create more that, shows so I can take a break from all of the writing. That's, also, that's the whole purpose of In yeah. the Weeds. <laughs> like, I don't feel like writing all the time. So let me, you know, do six hours of, uh, video for a week and then of course as all my ideas we start doing wrestler interviews and it's like oh i've created more work for myself out of these shows now because now i gotta transcribe and run my own interviews that i've done all my great ideas just create more work for me so yeah that's 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 usually how it works when you're when you're when you're good when you're good at something you you get more you get more opportunities like that yeah yeah it sucks (laughs) should not be good at this just... Yeah, but close also closed mouth don't get fed so that's why i that's say stuff like this so true. you know <laughs> i i should just do the bare minimum like i'm good just keep going on do the bare minimum <laughs> yeah. we don't have contracts what are we doing i don't even have a contract <laughs> i do not have a contract if anybody's getting a contract i assume it would be me outside yeah. of Pulowski and maybe jensen I've been here the longest. I do. Pulowski does a lot of video audio. There so like, I'm, I'm not knocking Pulowski at all. Jensen yeah, only. Him. Alex Pulowski. Alex Pulowski is on my, like my, um my bucket list of people to do a podcast with. Uh, Pulowski rules. I haven't, I haven't done a show with him in a while. I could literally jump on any stream I want. Even, even though, even though Joe Pearl says that you do a podcast every week with the black version of Alex Pulowski and Jimmy Macaram, so <laughs> oh, so that. <laughs> no, I don't have a contract. All right, everybody. Like, well, everybody else is thinking they're going to get a contract. I, I think I've, I've certainly done the most work. Uh, you're uh, one of the faces. You're the Brian Alvarez some, of, of, of Fife. No wonder. <laughs> no wonder things aren't going well. You're the Brian Alvarez. 
of Fightful. <laughs> now, see, AI transcribers suck. Yeah, and that's do. why I'll continue to stay employed. Exactly. Because they're not good. If someone's actually got to, you know, uh, transcribe and make sure this is what was actually said. Yes. All this stuff. And for anyone un- unaware, that's a that's an inside joke. Me calling him the Brian Alvarez of Fightful because yeah, someone, I, I told the story. Yeah. I, 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 guess I don't I know if it was on the main channel. I think this was on Fightful Overbook. So just in case. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't remember if I told it on In the Weeds. I think I did tell it on In the Weeds. I definitely told it on FMC, but yeah. I think it's but it wasn't on the main channel because main channel Monday had already passed by then. Yeah, it was it definitely wasn't main channel. Um, but you know, I assume we have similar listenership, FMC or not FMC. Nobody who listens to that show. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. They, they've that. missed out on a lot. They truly have. Like <laughs> that is like where the majority <laughs> of our inside jokes come from, is that show. <laughs> absolutely they got they got the whole rundown of of revolution weekend revolution weekend after that whole description of revolution weekend y'all should understand well i'm not doing wrestlemania weekend i'm gonna stay my myself at home i'm gonna watch it with my kids i'll do some work do some writing do some content have a great time we tried to uh we tried to Oh, we, we tried to bring FMC to In the Weeds when I, I played the clip of me narrating the HJ, and people were very appalled. By really? That. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> Joel had to leave. Joel had to, like, take a call. And so it was just me reflecting on narrating this experience. <laughs> FMC is for the real ones. That's it's very, the very real good. Ones. Yeah. It's for the real, the realest of the real. Yeah. Oh my god, man. That is an all-timer moment, man. Like, and then we just had an inside joke when when Sean said, Well, we're share. Yes. Because that 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 was one of the great moments. She's and this busy. is this is all She's happening busy. in 2024, guys. Two of the greatest moments in a show we've been doing for like three years happened in 2024. We will have a new episode of FMC tomorrow. I think the working plan is just too hot to handle. That's it. Seems about right That's to me. It. Yeah. I don't think we're going to do basketball. I, we don't have any like reality show to kind of like talk about. So I think we're just going to play a chapter or two of too hot to handle. That'd be a nice break from wrestling. Cause basically tomorrow really Wednesday is when mania week really kicks into yeah. to full gear. Um, so yeah, tomorrow will be what, a nice. What little... show are you looking forward to the most outside of WrestleMania this week? Uh <laughs> oh, you took away WrestleMania, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I took away. Re- I took away. Re- that's the obvious choice. That's the obvious. Especially well, is it Rock. obvious? You know, Ro- a lot of people with the, Rock, to... with the Rock this year. Yes, it is. Okay, for me, for me personally, a night one of WrestleMania is the show I'm looking forward to. Okay, mine is night two, and I very much look forward to the end of that show because <laughs> then it's over. <laughs> then it's just. But over. then you got you got to wait for the press conference. I know, I do have to. And wait AEW for the Collision is going to be at the same time. Well, not night two. It's a, a Collision. Oh yeah, yeah, night, 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 night one, night one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Night one. But they are they, they going to do a press uh, press conference after both nights? I would assume so. So yeah, you, it's they did last press, year press conference going head to head with Collision. Yeah, yeah, they did last year. <sighs> I always look forward to Bloodsport. Bloodsport's my like go-to answer because that's something different. I'm very much looking to Bloodsport because I would say out of like outside of WWE, like the two matches, two of two of the three matches I'm looking forward to the most is on that show with uh, Nemeth versus Speedball and Masha versus Shayna Baszler. Yeah, yeah, uh, Bloodsport's my my go-to for always WrestleMania week because it, it, it's something different. Janela's spring break is always fun. It just, it takes place so late typically, but it doesn't this year. Doesn't it doesn't it this year. Like Cause seven? they're on the East coast. Thank you. Yeah. Starts so, at like seven. Yeah. So like that's, that's at least helpful. Um, but he's still, he's still going to go like four hours. Yeah. I don't know if they're doing the cluster this year though. No, he didn't announce that. I haven't seen it. I, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to the Masha and, uh, 
Rina Yamashita versus uh, Minoru Suzuki and uh, Masato Tanaka match. That'll that'll be good. Um, I'm looking like I think Janelle is going to win the GCW title. Yeah, Blake Christian as well. So that'll be something big uh, moment. Yeah. Re- the WrestleCon Super Super Show is always fun. It's got Bailey and RVD. Like that. Yo, be, the, be, when I saw that, I was like, yo, that I know as someone who's a big fan of Speedball, and I've talked to him on you know a couple of occasions, whether it be on social media or through uh, interviews. I know this is like one of his dream matches, and I know that probably it was like Russell Khan coming to him and being like, "Who do you want to face this year at Russell Khan?" Because he's like he's been one of the guys that stole the show at Russell Khan the yeah. last couple of years. So they probably asked him, "Who do you want to verse?" And he said, "RVD." RVD said yes because you know he had WWE agreements too, but apparently his AEW uh, engagements ended that, so he needed something else. It's gonna be a great time. It's there's always a lot of good shows. There's always a lot of like fun matches and everything. It's I look forward to the wrestling. It's obviously gonna be very busy. Yeah, I think the media this year and that obviously affects me a little bit more because of all the stuff i have to cover the media this year is going to be insane it's always insane you involve the rock like and this isn't even necessarily like oh the rock is doing a bunch of appearances he is he is doing a handful of appearances but just the rock attaching his name to this and wrestling now you got outlets who typically wouldn't cover wrestling or maybe you know would only give them you know a couple of articles or whatever now they're like hey we want to cover this and maybe they can't talk to the rock but it's like you want to talk to cody rhodes you want to talk to becky lynch you want to talk to seth rollins it's like yeah sure we want to cover this because the rock is involved and so that just feeds more media and feeds more stuff that i gotta cover so it's uh and it, it starts in about two hours when CM Punk does this interview because and kicking off by the way, the week with like a CM Punk interview one, he's going to say a lot and he'll want somebody who's going to press. So it's not going to be a fluff of like, Oh, let's just talk about WrestleMania, your injury. Hawani going to ask questions that, you know, you probably want to be asked. You want to hear about how much punk gives is up to him, obviously, but he's going to ask the questions. Not only do you get like the punk interview, then you get the people responding to punk. Yes. Then it's like, hey, if he says something about AEW, do they, you know, people reaching out to AEW, what do you think about punk? If he says something about Seth, can you respond to punk? Cody, can you respond to punk? Roman, can you respond to punk? Like you get the responses to the interview on top of the interview. It's yep. going to be such a busy week. It is going to be it's such gonna be amazing. it's gonna be fun and that and there's like other wrestling outside of like because I was gonna be the smart the smart uh, uh, if you asked me the question back I was gonna say NJPW Sakura Genesis 2024 is the show I'm looking forward to the most uh, during Fuck, WrestleMania I weekend about yes that, that yo Saturday is ridiculous like we I've I've made the I'm not gonna the, sleep the, the executive decision of moving True Hill Heat from from Saturday to Friday because there's too much going on on Saturday because with New Japan in the morning. I think that show starts at like 3 a.m. Then you got NXT at noon. Then you got anything else that's going on. I don't know. I think maybe Effie's. Wait, when's, when's the New Japan show? Is it, is it Saturday morning? 3 a.m. on Saturday. Saturday morning. April 6th. Oh, it's, it's Saturday morning. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I see it now. For some reason, I thought it was like Saturday night, Sunday morning, but no. No. It's, no. Oh, oh my God! So it's it is like SmackDown slash ROH. Yep. New Japan. NXT. Deliver. WrestleMania Night One. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not sleeping Friday to Saturday. <laughs> you better. My take wife a, is hearing this now. And you better probably... take advantage of three o'clock to seven p.m. Like uh, Miss Mrs. Uh, Mrs. ITW General Manager, make sure you make you get him to take some type some type of nap. In She's the very good about that. Yeah, yeah, the, my, my, that's how. That's why I'm shouting her out because my missus is like that with me. She makes sure that I, I get like, oh, this is the time you're gonna be free on one of these crazy wrestling days. Take your nap now. She's the one that reminds me. So I know yeah, your missus will do the same. Yeah, she's good about that. All right, so yeah, that Friday to Saturday stretch is uh gonna be something. All right, well, 
Look, I train all year for this SB3. I'm like a, you know, a, a fighter who has his one fight a year, gets in peak shape for this yeah, fight. Ready, this is ready. Be ready. Be ready, go. Train for. train for this week. Right, let's get out of here. I'm, do, I'm doing tonight. content all this week, man. All this week. It's going to be a great time. I'm off Rawls, today, but all content. <laughs> Rawls tonight. We'll talk about it on Wednesday. I think Joel will be back. If not, You'll probably see SP3 again. Um, are you free? Just a just a heads up. Are you free 10 to 12 yeah, on yeah, sure. Wednesday? Yeah, we're okay. doing uh NXT stand and deliver preview on uh Wednesday with none other than Fightful's own Corey. Corey's gonna Corey Brenner is gonna be joining us uh for the NXT stand and deliver. I gotta see if I can get any scoops from him before stand and deliver. So we're gonna have him on on Wednesday. Uh it will be me and him, and then Tuesday, tomorrow. It'll be myself, Romeo, and special guest Zach Haydorn. Uh, we'll be previewing the WrestleMania 40 card. So we'll talk a little bit about Raw the previous night and preview all the matches for WrestleMania. Probably be tomorrow at 105 p.m. Eastern time. So a couple of hours after in the week. I mean, after FMC ends. Yeah, I don't know what time we're doing FMC tomorrow. Again, we'll probably only go like an hour, if yeah. that. Just play in Too Hot to Handle, a break from wrestling before we get engulfed by wrestling this entire week um, absolutely i i was like I, I said yesterday i was like cherishing because i did a podcast about x-men 97 and i was like it's gonna be the last time i talk about something not wrestling for like the next uh, week. we gotta we gotta have the fmc and talk talk some wrestling we have yes. to have yes to. or to not talk wrestling yes wrestling. yes <laughs> have to. all right anything else to plug sp3 uh, just, yeah, check out True Hill Heat YouTube channel. We'll go live uh, today at 2.05 p.m. Eastern time. Myself and Sober Guy JJ reviewing uh, Saturday's AEW Collision. I know we talked about it a little here, but more in-depth review over there on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel. And, yes, check out our X-Men 97 review over on the True Hill Heat Sports and Entertainment channel because we're pushing to 1,000 subscribers over there as well. Go go check that out. I've watched the first episode of X Men '97. I got. What did you think? Oh, I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. That last it's, fight it's, sequence, though, that was yeah. tough. That was yeah. tough. I gotta watch. There, there's three episodes out, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I got I know the first two came out together, but I didn't get a chance to watch the second one. And you're, I you're don't, actually, I no you actually are watching it the right way because if you watch like two and three back to back, it's like uh -huh. the the ending of two leads into three, so you're fine. Okay. Okay. Cool. I, I at some point I will watch these episodes. Yeah, I, I, yeah I'm not. I'm not counting on you to do it this week. Yeah. I'm gonna find time on Wednesday, uh, sometime probably before if I'm on in the weeds. Before I'm in the weeds, I'll watch X Men '97, the new episode. All right, everybody, we'll be back on Wednesday. It'll be um, <clears throat> sorry, we'll be back on Fight Flover booked on Wednesday. Appreciate y'all hanging out with us this morning, Wednesday in the weeds, 10 a.m. to noon Eastern. Everyone go to Fight Flow Book. Check out all the shows we got over there. I know a lot of people saw Maggie in the chat. Check out Coexisting with Rob and Maggie every Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. We appreciate Maggie. She's always in the chat. Uh, either here or uh, she's always on Spotlight in the chat yeah. with us as well. We got a uh, – fingers crossed comes through. We got Teal Rhodes on Spotlight this week. I got to pretend that I've said nothing but nice things about Cody <laughs> for the past few months here, and I've not trolled Cody. <laughs> got to pretend. Bye, everybody.